So about a month ago, I asked you all which language I should write Hobby Linux with. I offered a few options, Bash, Ruby, Python, Node, and Golang. These are languages I already know, so I won't be having to learn anything new per se. I was more curious about what languages you preferred, and in no surprise, Python was the winner by a sizable margin. But I went with Ruby. Why? Well, Ruby got just 8% in my own poll with 115 votes, and looking at larger language trends, Ruby isn't doing so hot. But before I tell you why, let me show you this really cute game called Armello. It's a strategy board game with some role-playing elements where you play these cute anthropomorphic animals in a kind of dark fantasy world. You pick from eight different heroes, all with different attributes and abilities, and you can edit their loadout and have slightly different builds, but it's like the same gameplay. I like to play River when I'm playing solo for like a kind of sniper build, and then Zasha for multiplayer so I can sneak around and stay out of view. The goal is to reach the end of the game with the most prestige points or by killing the corrupted king. There's a lot of different gameplay mechanics like rot, darkness, items, spells, and settlements. It's not actually that complicated, but it is really fun and the overall design of the game is really cute. So why did EG pick Ruby as the language for his new hobby Linux project? Well, Ruby has been a pet language of mine for a while, and if you didn't know, some of us geeks and dorks like to get so fixated on inanimate things such as languages that we fall in love. My first programming crush and eternal love is and was Ruby. Now, I'm a self-taught developer, and one of the first languages I ever learned to code in was C Sharp. I hated it, though. The syntax and the typings always tripped me up and made it very difficult to learn anything on the fly. I went out and seek of other languages that would be easier to learn and found Ruby. Unfortunately, I was working in a .NET shop, so I never got to use it professionally, but I discovered Why the Lucky Stiff and read Why's Poignant Guide to Ruby, and it was over. I had to get me some Ruby stat. I put a link to Why's Guide in the description, by the way. You should check it out. Ruby was a really cool community at one point before Rails came and cast a dark cloud on everything Ruby related, but it, it still is. It's just quieter today. Most of the time when you say Ruby, people think of Rails, and Rails is really its own thing. But Wise Guide showed me that I could do so much work with Ruby with very little code. Like how you can call calls straight from an array and perform operations on each element. Python has its for syntax, which is honestly pretty good, but I prefer the brevity that comes from making the language work for you. And that's a motto that I use in everyday life. Make it work for you. Or a more salient way of saying it is, only do the work that you need to, and by byproduct, have someone else do the rest of the work. If everyone followed that rule, then we would be doing the least amount of work required for our tasks. Using Ruby as an example, to perform an operation on an array, all I need is the array. It doesn't even need to have anything in it. Just a pair of square brackets, bam. The each function comes along with the array, so you can rest assured anywhere you see those brackets, you also have an each function. It's an extremely simple concept, but under the hood, Ruby's doing all kinds of stuff to make it work that way. But that's okay. It is not my problem or concern with how the runtime is digesting my code. I just don't want to explicitly tell my machine how to do each and everything when I could literally just be saying dot each and be done with it. Not only does it make the language easier to learn, it's also easier to review. You can just look at it and know what's going on. It also means that I, or any developer, has to remember less syntax and other languagey rules in your head while you're coding. Now I feel like that's a boon specifically to me being self-taught because I often know the implementation of a solution before I go to develop it and I don't want to get lost in the sauce and figure out where a curly bracket is supposed to go. I know how it's supposed to work, just let me code it. So, but what about Python? That's also a syntax-less language when compared to something like c -sharp. There's also a bit of Node.js, which can be a very brief language, and it also has those little for-each helper functions that I like. If I hadn't used Python professionally at my last job, I probably would have used it here. Thing is, from an ops perspective, Python sucks. The standard library is weak, the incessant imports and selfs drive me nuts, and its dependency management is real bad. Python as a language in a runtime is fine, but it relies way too heavily on third-party packages. And what's worse, Python's pip is not good, like objectively speaking. They've even tried to improve on pip with pip env, pip tools, poetry, and none of them fix the fundamental problem. Best thing you can do is just try to avoid third-party libs, but Python doesn't even support YAML in its standard library, so you have to use third-party libs if you're working with YAML. 
And don't even get me started with the hell that's managing AWS CLI with Boto 3 and Boto Core, all separate versions. Now, Node.js's package management is slightly better, and it does have a better standard library in my opinion, but it's just not a good ops language. I've written CLIs and opsy tools in both languages, and I just prefer Ruby. Hobby Linux is my passion project, and so I'll finally be able to put my passion for Ruby to good use with it. So yeah, I chose Ruby because I really, really like it, and I always have. I want to point out that this is specifically Ruby and its standard libraries. No gems so far, and absolutely no Rails. I'm not opposed to getting like colorized to add some color to the CLI output, but nothing like Rails, and possibly not even Commander if I can avoid it. Like, I don't gain anything from doing that. I think it takes more programming skills to avoid dependencies, but it also avoids breakages due to upstream projects having issues, but also security concerns with vulnerabilities. As of right now, Hobby Linux is just an options parser CLI installer that does some shell commands basically, but that's all it needs to be. It doesn't need any third-party dependencies. There will be a GUI installer at some point, and I've considered what to write that in, and it might not be Ruby, I don't know. GUI development is really its own thing, so I'll have to evaluate that once I reach that bridge. But until then, it's probably just going to stay Ruby scripts in the terminal, and I like it that way. Nice and simple. But yeah, that's going to wrap it up. So if you like what I do and you're interested in Hobby Linux in the channel and you like to see more content, you can subscribe or you can become a member. I've picked up a few members between now and my last video, I think the last video before that, so we're growing and that's good. I love seeing more people sign up. It tells me that I'm doing the right thing. I'm trying to do weekly content here and I'm just trying to produce stuff that I'm interested in, but if I'm interested in, you might be interested in too, and I see it from your comments. My videos don't get a ton of views, but they get really, really cool comments and engagement, and that's really what I value. So if you like what I do, feel free to stop by and stick around. You might see more good stuff. But yeah, and I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.